you guys went to the tavern, um, the tavern over basically said, okay, there's a very dangerous way, but it's a lot shorter to get to, uh, the capital of the Summerfay Court. And then he said that there's, uh, supposedly a much safer way, but it takes a lot longer. You guys decided to Please go- you guys chose the dangerous way. They chose the safer mm. way, but they got attacked oh by God. three- They got attacked <laughs> by three dryads, so- and it seemed like the, the forest was acting strangely. Like, the dryads were awfully aggressive, and that's when they found uh, Flower, your I new party shit. member. Yeah. You found your new party member, who was originally um, dangling upside down from a tree because the dryads had captured them, and... <laughs> well, no, I was, I was high. Uh, I, I drank Fey blood. It makes me high. Oh, yeah, yeah. We found out that <laughs> Elvari, when he drinks Fey blood, that makes him high, basically. And he started hallucinating. Oh, my God. So you guys left the woods, you came back to the tavern. The so, Lipro died. Yeah, so you returned to the tavern in Lighthorn and asked the barkeep about what occurred. He told you all that strange things have been happening in the wicked elm woodlands, like the plants and other nature sprites becoming agitated and attacking even other fey, and that the woods completely took over a settlement that used to exist between Lighthorn and Lufleon that was involved with the growing lumber industry. He suggested that perhaps what was happening must be spreading to other forests in the area, although this was the first time he'd heard of it. Charlotte and Andrew asked if there was anything or anyone that could help them figure out how to solve the situation, so the barkeep told them about a man who appeared to be a summer fae from outside of town that seemed to know a lot about plants, much more than the rest of the villagers. The man had claimed to be heading toward the south of Lighthorn, where there's mostly farms after leaving the tavern. Then we are now looking for him. Yes! Oh, awesome. I play a soldier, soldier, so I have all the navigational skills. Didn't you also lose all of your memory? <laughs> yeah, but that's besides the point. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's strangely good at navigation, despite not remembering how. <laughs> he does not remember anything. Also knows how to navigate. I love this. By the time you get back and you're talking to the barkeep, it is nighttime, though, so he does ask if you'd like to rent a room for the night. Oh, so I don't have to have my cloak on. Either you can rent a room for the night, or you can go ahead and search for him now, but he does- means I'm gonna be 99% yeah, like more distracted than I normally would be. Oh no. <laughs> I vote we search. Yeah, search. Right. Yeah, definitely. I guess, are you- Navigation, navigation? I suppose. Yeah, investigation, that's not navigation. Not can I'm I roll, the, um- Navigator's tools is the thing. Wait, it is? Yeah, oh, you, can, you can have navigator tools, yeah. Oh, and so I'm for investigation. Get my cat out of the way. It, okay, it, I got. It mostly depends on your background. Like the background you choose, you can get navigator's tools. And, like... Adele, I got oh. a five to find him. Investigation. Can I roll survival? I mean, I'm holding my plus four 22. survival very close to my chest. Yeah, I have a twenty-two. I mean, you can roll survival if you want. Yes. Yes. Maybe. A lot. Goodbye. I wasted the plus four on that. Eleven. <laughs> nice. I got so, a five. Charlotte, you're completely lost. You're like, I have been living in winter my whole life and I have no idea where I am. <laughs> what is all this Yay. what is all this stuff? I don't I don't recognize Yay. any of this. <laughs> Even though you've been to like a farm the most often. <laughs> yeah, I have a guy twenty two. Um, Thank God. So Andrew and Elvari are able to lead the way. As you head toward the farmlands of Lighthorn, the moon casts a faint silver light across the grassy ground. Moonflowers slowly open their white petals to catch a glimpse of the starry sky above. In between your glances at the clusters of flowers and bushes covering the landscape, you hear the sounds of rustling leaves and branches cracking in the wind. There are several moments where you could almost swear you saw a thorny vine slither like a snake through the grass, only to look closer and see nothing move. The fey lands around you seem magical and otherworldly, yet haunting in the night. When you see the first peak of hay piles and windmills, you know you must have reached your destination. By the time you're next to wooden buildings full of sleeping animals, a leafy is running around like looking for things. They end up finding some bird eggs, a few herbs, and random berries. And he starts running toward the crops, like you see rows of tomato plants, um, squash, and even some berries tied up in vines. <laughs> and as he's running around, you notice a group of moths have begun to swarm around him. Oh my god. The survival roll lets you find food in the wilderness. <laughs> oh god. 
<laughs> I start chanting about the food that I'm finding. I, I think we need more food. You know, I, I don't think we have enough food. Um, I, I looked in, I looked at your bag while you were um, not looking, and I don't, I don't, I don't think you, I don't think we have enough food. I have more. I brought more. I found more. Uh, <laughs> I don't need food, but thank you. All of the moths just start landing on a leafy's head and arms with like oh curiosity. Gosh. It's like that TikTok with the the eating moth things on the bull guy. <laughs> Um, okay, well, you're weird and you don't need food, but what about everyone else? I have food. I found food. Uh, I don't need food, but thank you, Leafy. Um, Adela got 22, so what, uh, what did I find? I got investigation. Uh, well, you, you guys managed to find the farmland. You see, like, large wooden buildings that are filled with sleeping cows. And you hear a few horse hooves stomping against the ground as, like, one or two that aren't sleeping are out drinking from a pond. You said, hold on, you said, you, you see cows, but then you said horse hooves. Yeah, like, there's, there's different buildings. Like, one building has cows sleeping in it. Like, a, there's, like, a different building, different fenced off field, and there's, like, you hear ho horse hooves, and the horses that aren't sleeping, there's, like, a few drinking from a pond. Okay. Uh, you guys can all roll perception if you want. Keen I'm senses. 20. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, it's because it's nighttime, and we like... <laughs> 19. Okay, man, you guys are rolling good. I yeah, except me, who got two. a fucking five. <laughs> Again? A 16 to perceive, Josh. What did you roll this time, Cat? Cat gets a nat one. Now. Shut up. <laughs> no, it's okay. Cat gets a nat two. Nat two. Nat two. Nat two. Nat two. Nat two. Fifteen. Fifteen. You. Harder. Fifteen. Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah, fuck you. I got an eighteen. Oh, Dang. Did you guys? You guys all got above a thirteen then, pretty much. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Everyone except a leafy. You see a person. <laughs> You see a person standing further down the rows of crops. From this distance, they look like a hazy speck to you, except for a leafy. You notice that beside them is a person with a hat crouched down while touching a few of the plants. Wait, uh, how did I not notice that? Because you didn't. Yeah, you you got yeah you got a nineteen. Below a nat twenty though. Yeah, you got. Start frantically at whatever's in the distance. You and, friend... I, and, I, and I like I like explain that there are two people there. Uh, uh, give me a second. I will go see. And he turns into his mystery. Are you one. doubting me? You shouldn't be doubting no, no, me. I have very I, good I'm survival skills. You. I'm gonna go see I have very are. good survival skills. You should you should not doubt me. Olivia, I'm not see two you. people. Olivia, <laughs> calm. I'm going to go see who they are. Okay, stay here. Don't are they big? Me. I don't think they're big. They don't look big. Uh, I turned to my misform. That's really like dead. A leafy technically has better eyesight and like senses than um mm -hmm. Alvari because they have blind sight. <laughs> uh oh, that makes sense. I get blind sight on like a few levels. It's I think it's because moth and then uh arcane gunslinger. Ah, <laughs> uh, makes sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, I turned to my misform so I can't be seen, and I go over to see if I can hear what they're doing. The person standing next to the other fae crouching on the ground, he seems to be the farmer that possibly owns this land by the way he's dressed. He's just saying like, yeah, I, I, I don't know what's wrong with everything. Like, it wasn't like this last year. Did something's up with just this growing season in particular or something? I don't know what's happening. And the guy crouching next to him is, he's just kind of absorbed in inspecting these plants. Can I roll to see if I know what's wrong? You can roll nature. Okay. Hey, good thing I have Jew with family members. Uh, not 20. Oh my god, okay. Originally you thought, wow, these plants look like really delicious and like beautiful from farther away. But as you get closer and you're staring at what they're looking at, you notice that these plants are actually covered in dark spots and holes peppered through their leaves and fruits. The fae crouching down is looking at a blotchy tomato plant in front of him, and you notice as he pulls one of the fully ripened tomatoes off of the vine and it turns it around in his hand, dark splotches begin to ooze some sort of greenish pus, and he grimaces at the sticky substance now coating his hands and puts the tomato into his brown cloth satchel at his side while rubbing um, his palms. Can I, glance, can I tell what's wrong? Or do I need to like, touch it to figure it out? You can just tell that there seems to be some sort of, like, blight or strange disease affecting these plants. Okay, I'ma go a little bit away and transform into my human form, and I'm going to walk up to them. Avari walks up. Uh, it appears that a blight has reaped your crops. 
the two did not notice you appear at all. The <laughs> farmer, the know. farmer just kind of like turns around, is like, oh! <laughs> for a moment, completely scared, and the other guy is just. Gets a chuckle. The other guy is just so completely absorbed in what he's doing that he doesn't even notice until uh, the other man screams that you're even there. He uh, he just kind of dusts himself off as he stands up, and looks between you two and. The farmer uh, stops for a moment. He's like, uh, how can I help you? Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, me and my friends are traveling as we're looking for someone. It, you know, late night traveling and all. Um, we're not from around here. I just couldn't help but notice your crops have a blight. Figured maybe I can help. Yeah, you're definitely not from around here. He says as he looks at the way you're dressed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he has a crop know. top. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm wearing a crop top and like baggy pants and a cloak. Yeah, you know, just like my family. You can say they're good with this type of thing. Uh, may I? And he points to the tomato. I I, su I suppose you can. And the man standing next to him, he steps he steps in front of you for a moment, and you look up because he is nearly six and a half foot tall, and he has reddish hair oh, down. He's not that much taller than me. I mean, that's that's like. You're five nine, right? Or no, you think you put yeah, five eight. I'm actually five nine, I think I just okay. took it wrong. You said he's about six foot, so six and a half. No, he's like almost a foot taller than you. <laughs> but yeah, he has reddish hair down to his shoulders, brown skin, and his ears are even longer and more pointed than most other Fae you've met so far. You spot a mole below his right eye as he smiles and bows gracefully and he says, My name is Luron, horticulturist by trade, general botanist by choice. Um, you say you know a lot about what's happening here, pray tell? Yes, uh, so where uh, I'm from, um, this type of thing happens. It used to happen quite often. You see, where I'm from wasn't really in favor with of nature, uh, you could say. But my family, a branch of it at least, is, uh, Druids. And I spent quite a bit of time with them in the spirits of nature, so I know quite a bit. At that, he kind of straightens his back because he bowed while he was introducing himself and he flicks the top of his hat so you can better oh, see his eyes back, by the way okay yeah he he like moves his head up so you can better see his eyes and he's still smiling but is he doing the annoying hat flick thing i suppose I, I, I don't i would say uh -huh. i don't i don't know cat i don't watch tiktok that much <laughs> it's, no it's a cowboy thing that a lot of southern people do um, I got no clue what that is, and I live in Kentucky. <laughs> this is like Dang. south, south, like Texas. So he takes it, and uh, what can I roll to inspect it? It's, would that be medicine, nature? I would say nature again. Because I have knowledge of this, because Barovia, you know how Barovia was. 19, again. Yeah, there's obviously some sort of blight or dark magic that is affecting this land, and possibly polluting it. Between the forest that you've been through, the forest you've heard about, and then these plants, you can say there's some sort of, perhaps it's a curse, perhaps there's an individual purposely... So yeah, you believe it's probably caused by some sort of magic. Can I roll Arcana, just be sure? Yeah, go for it. Not one. No! <laughs> you have no idea. Five. You have no idea. You're like, you think uh, that maybe it's some I sort of magic. Can I try to use nature magic on it? Uh, so see how it reacts. Uh, sure. What kind of magic, though? Uh, can I try to grow a small plant in the ground and see how it, the land reacts to like magic influencing it? Yeah, go for it. You just make a tiny flower to see if it affects it like it does the tomato. Should I roll Arcana for that? Since it's like not like in my, I'm not really skilled in it. Uh, yeah, roll Arcana. A natural twenty. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> Why is my arcana so bad, except for, like, now, like... Personally... No one pointing out the fact that he gave us his name. No one pointing- wait, are we in the Fey realm? Didn't he give us his name? What's up with that? Fey can have fake names. As long as they oh. don't know your true name, then they don't have power over you. I mean, like, Abari's true name get, gets changed whenever I was reach adulthood, so, like, his true name, I guess, no. Oh, yeah, like how Alethe is a nickname because they don't remember their actual name. Well, his true name just, uh, has trauma attached to it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, um, 
most fey uh only like only their um parents and if they ever like find like i guess you could say like their soulmate or get married or bonded or whatever those are the only people that know their true name okay you have power over them, uh, otherwise. thank you for telling me that okay continue i want to say that you take a seed out of this tomato and you put it in the ground and you try to use plant growth on it it barely grows it takes a lot of effort because you're not used to casting this sort of magic and especially not in this environment it does grow and it takes several minutes to finally make one full tomato and at first it looks like a normal delicious tomato and Luran just kind of stares at you and so does the farmer and they're just kind of shocked and in awe like but then after a moment several dark splotches appear on it and it's almost as if some kind of energy is eating into this tomato holes start appearing and it starts oozing and eventually the tomato like bursts into like this gross pus filled like black sludge oh again sure are the rest of you all just watching yeah, from a I distance well, oh I my god mean... i'm just like well that... uh... I imagine the group's closer, but they're still keeping their distance because, like, reasons. you know, no, now that you, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna approach them too. Oh, <laughs> well, as everybody else is kind of like hanging back a little bit, like that's weird. A leafy just like walks straight up, like staring at the sludge. That's <laughs> pretty like gross. Hi, leafy. <laughs> Uh, so nat 20, what do I know? Okay, nat 20. There's definitely something uh, affecting the land itself. And it has corrupted the land so bad that anything grown in it will be eaten by this blight. It reminds you of what your family had told you about in Barovia, of the Gultheus tree. I think that's how you pronounce it. If you guys remember that from Curse of Strahd. <laughs> I don't think I was there for that session. Okay, it's basically a big blight tree. It creates twig blights. Oh, so, that oh, thing. I'm the fighting I hated that. <laughs> I hated that three. thing. <clears throat> we had to set on fire. Oh, yeah, um, it's, so, it was terrible, but that's what this reminds Elvari of. So, Elvari's gonna stand up. He's gonna dust off his uh, legs and make it float, like I thought. The, your land is corrupted itself uh, with magic. It's similar to the Gulfius Blight Tree, which was... He's just gonna explain it, because I don't have the energy to do so. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Luren's eyes appear to darken just by the slightest fraction. He shifts his weight to one leg and like taps a knuckle against his lips in thought. He goes, You're the first person to realize this besides myself that I've spoken to. I'm sure there's others out there that know even more about plants. And what you did is very strange. You see, I know you said that there's druids in your family, which are usually from the spring court, and the magic that you cast is a spring fey ability however the portals between here and the spring fey court have been closed for over 300 years oh i'm not a spring fey i raise my hand and i say oh they can turn into a bat <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you say that he immediately covers your mouth <laughs> Charlotte is just- okay, Charlotte wouldn't react to this, but I'm laughing my butt off right now. Uh, I, I'm not spring fey. Let, let me roll perception to see if he even caught what he said. <laughs> Wait a second. Mind you, Avari has to be on his tippy toes to do this to you. Oh yeah, he's only like seven foot tall. Vegetation moment. Oh my god, 23. Okay, so he does hear what Alifi says about you um, turning into a bat, and he looks even more shocked. He's like, oh, that's a that's an autumn phase spell, being able to change into animals. Are you sure you have no fey ancestry? Only a little. It's really diluted by now, though, so that doesn't really affect me. Like, I have the ears, or... Uh... A trance, but like, that's about it. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not fae. Uh, not my family's fae. He squints and like he moves closer to your face and is just staring into your eyes really closely uh, for a moment. He moves his face closer. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, he wants to tactic. Intimidation tactic. He's like, well, obviously he wants a better look. <laughs> Okay. I'm just staring down at him because I'm taller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at, at you, like, moving closer, Luron just kind of, like, moves back a little, like, whoa. He's like, 
Okay. If you, you say so. If you want. But I am not fair. I simply have people who are good to my family. That is all. He just kind of smirks. And is like, alright. Can I roll to see if he knows? Uh, sure. Roll insight. Thank you, Adele, for giving me actually good pluses. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Getting good what pluses? Get? No. What do you get? Not one. Not one. You, you have... <laughs> You have no idea what this man's thinking, or what he thinks of you, or anything. He just seems kind of amused by you, and that's all you can hey, gather. Uh, Ezra, have your character roll for it, because you're the only one who's close enough to understand what's going on. Um, uh, like uh, my name's Alvari, Alvari mm. Bungel, and he presents his hand. Insight? Oh no, my insight's horrible. I, hey, hey, 15, that's not bad. It's better than that one. Alifi, as uh, Ludron and Elvari are talking, you just kind of like stare really intently at Ludron's expression, kind of like, what is this guy thinking? And you just see that he seems to have like the expression of somebody who knows something or is a bit skeptical or interested, but you can't tell exactly what he's thinking. But yeah, so Alifi kind of just realizes this guy might know something. Might be kind of amused and just interested and skeptical of you, Which but guy? I like loom over Elvari and I tap them on the shoulder. Yeah, he looks up at you. And I like lean in real close. It kind of looks a little frightening because it's a giant moth leaning uh, no, real he, close. Uh, he he seen scarier. Don't worry. <laughs> cool. He just looks okay. At you, just like well, not really frightening. More like disturbing because it's a bug. All right. <laughs> and I just, bugs. And I just whisper really loudly. I think he knows something. <laughs> Adele, please make quote stickers of this character for the love of her. I think he knows something. <laughs> I, I think um, so too. Luron could hear what she said and he goes, Perhaps I know something? Does that mean there's something to know? I like you. Me? He says this to uh, Luron. <laughs> oh, <laughs> He's like, Me? <laughs> So, like, uh, he just uh, he has a leafy shoulder. I'm so sorry for being so funny. Some crimes <laughs> you never be forgiven. I love you, too. <laughs> Do you not believe me that I am not a fan? Well, whether I believe you or not, I feel like I need to study you more, perhaps, in order to figure out the truth. I tap him on the shoulder, too. Ludan? Or Elvari? Yeah. Okay, you tap him on the shoulder. <laughs> he just looks up at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fair either. I, I can see you are a you are a moth, uh, uh, Hang on, slowly. Like a uh, and I uh, just Elvari. stare at him. Elvari kind of just puts his like lifts up his arms like you can examine me, interview me, run tests on me. I am not fair. I don't even use a spell to transform into a bat. All right. I can do it right now if you want. Hmm. He looks between you and, like, the plants on the ground. He's like, no, that will not be necessary. I have more important things to worry about at the moment. You see, I have traveled a great distance after hearing word of the plants and nature sprites in this area behaving strangely. It appears that even some elementals have become affected by the disease in this area, as if something has uh, triggered a blight that is polluting the land, as you said. Uh, yes, uh, we are aware we were attacked by them on the way here. Oh, then... Mm. The situation has gotten even worse than I thought. Uh, they trapped a bay. Oh. Ugh. He just kind of like takes his hand and is like rubbing his forehead like, Oh god. I am afraid that if this is left unchecked, perhaps even the entire summer court could be overtaken by this unknown sickness. How about this? We help you, you help us. Deal? He looks between your odd group. Although I... I don't fully understand why you would specifically ask for my services. Um, why not? This will be a very dangerous quest, so I need all the help I can get. I mean, I was almost killed the other day. I'm up for anything at this point. This <laughs> 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 is cheerfully, by the way. He just continues to smile despite you saying yeah. that, and he's just like, all right, well, I'll be delighted to leave post-haste, and he holds out a hand for each of you all to shake. When Avari takes his hand, he says, Oh, uh, I have a bit of an odd question. Are you full fey or half fey? Uh, I am full fey. I am a summer fey through and through. Why do you ask? No reason. 
but he gives a cheeky smile. Mm. I like your ears. Thank you. Then he just eyes you Charlotte warily. Does shake his hand. <laughs> like, does he have any reaction to her? Because they're technically polar opposites. Well, when you take his hand, he grips your hand a few times before letting go and just, like, opens and closes his palm. He's like, you're part winter, Faye, aren't you? Yes. Your hand is very cold. Clearly. But I can tell you smell a bit different, so... Are you a half Faye? Sorry, but apologies if that's a rude question. I don't normally come across many half Faye in the Faye lands. I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, yes. And he like awkwardly goes to the next one. He like awkwardly goes to the next person. Uh, he goes to shake Andrew's hand. Well, all right. Good to meet you. Yeah, I love I'm Andrew's good. accent. Anyway, then, like, good to meet you. Uh, hopefully we can get through this dangerous quest all nice and safe. He takes your hand and shakes it, and he goes, Ah, oh, an orc. Very great to meet you. I haven't met an orc in quite some time. Well, as you can see, I'm not used to meeting anybody that's not Faye. <laughs> <laughs> the bike gets a chuckle and just goes to obviously. I'm flattered, but you're a bit wrong. I'm a half-orc. Oh! That's- are you part Faye? Uh, Oh. A while ago. A long time ago. Ah, well, some people believe that perhaps orcs are descendants of Fae, although some humans believe that orcs are descendants of them. We don't truly know, but happy to meet you either way. He goes towards Jade and takes her hand and Jade signs, Jade Titty Cleaver, grandest greetings and best of luck. <laughs> is what Josh typed. <laughs> um... Luran just quirks a brow and he looks slightly amused by her last name when she says Titty Cleaver and he's like It is great to meet you, Miss Titty Cleaver. <laughs> Good tidings. Uh, and then he goes to Flower. Luran holds out a hand towards Flower and tells them it is it's great to meet you. I can tell you must be a celestial fae. They're even more rare than me seeing a half fae around here or even an orc. Chopped liver? He looks at you with that, that same smile again. He's like, I'm still considering what you are. Mark is a chuckle. Uh, I would love to know your hypothesis as soon as you get one. Uh, he's... I like having a high charisma. <laughs> he just kind of like bows slightly, like just with his neck, but not with his whole back. And he's like, I'll be sure to let you know in due time. Though, can I have this one? I like this one. <laughs> I, I um, like this one. Okay, Teo says Flower seems really shocked and nervous, and it's just dead silent. At how nervous they are, Luran just kind of takes his hand back and just kind of nods at them in instead. And he's like, apologies if I frightened you in any way. Flower says, ah, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, uh, that's right. Um, Luran's going to shake Alifi's hand last. I shake his hand very slowly. Which width of your arms? <laughs> Three of them. <laughs> <laughs> So Leafy just grabs his hands with three of their arms and just starts shaking. Slowly. <laughs> I feel like you are going to be the one that I need to watch out for the most for some reason. <laughs> Avar cannot hold back his laugh when he hears that. <laughs> well, would you all like to try and deal with these blights at night, or would you prefer to wait until the morning? Night. Night is best. Right. And he turns to the farmer that's just kind of been silently watching you guys in complete confusion this whole time. Excuse me, Sir Nolan, but I must be on my way. And his words, Nolan just like flushes a shade of red and is like, Mr. Luran, there's no reason to call an old farmer like me, sir. And Luran just simply continues to smile brightly and he says, Why ever not? I greatly respect your hard work Why and dedication to your land. Why do you keep making romanceable dating character <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Cat, are your are your standards really that low that the man in just has to be polite? <laughs> he smells nice. Or is that the ground? I mean, <laughs> let's keep going, everyone. <laughs> so you guys just gonna head out now, All right? So he, of course he says goodbye to the Farmer Noland, and you guys head out. As you're leaving, he grabs his cape from a wooden chair that was sitting nearby and kind of attaches it with like a golden pin. He goes, "All right." So, last time you all tried the Hemlock Woods, would you like to try the Wicked Elm Woodlands? 
Hey, I'm scared. Oh, is yes. he covering yes, his yes, neck? Yes, 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 yes. Is he covering his neck? Uh, does the cake cover his neck? Yes. What were you gonna do? Please, please don't get addicted to fate one. Uh, were you were you just trying to like freaking bite him out of nowhere? Well, let's just say there's a reason to ask if he's poor fate or not. Oh no. Pika. So, sure. I don't really mind. If I'm honest, I don't really exactly remember when we entered the woods. Scratches the like side of his head. I don't really remember the intro. I just remember getting hit a lot. <laughs> Oh, let's let's get going, shall we? And he just walks ahead, not waiting for a response. Oh, for the love of God! <laughs> I look at I look at not Charlotte. And I just ask, what's wrong? No, she didn't say that. <laughs> no, no, like I asked, like what's wrong in, in pertaining to like what Elvari? Why Elvari's acting like that? I have no idea. Hmm. He most likely oh, has weird. some sort of death wish or something. Can I want to see if I heard that? Oh, I God. think for a moment, and I say, I, I think for a moment, and I say, do you think that they're hiding anything? Do you think that they're hiding something? I have no idea. I don't really like people who are hiding things. Mm. I hate them almost as much as I hate tall people. Mm. <laughs> Why are you, you a tall, tall person? Oh, no, I'm talking about taller. Oh, uh... I don't like tall people. Okay, I don't hear anything, so I can't make the smart remark I want to make. Does your character respond when I say, why do you hate taller people? They kind of look at you for a few seconds and they shrug and they go, I don't know. I just, they, they, they're weird, I guess. You like, you know, I look at, I look at someone who is taller than me and I think, why am I suddenly filled with a strange urge to leave, you know? (laughs) And I think it's, I think, you know, I think I've cracked it. I think I've cracked the code. Um, I think the reason why I don't like tall people is because um, I'm a moth, and moths are bugs, and mm-hmm. bugs are small, mm-hmm. and small things can get crushed by tall things. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe that's why. I think that's why. Okay. I just imagine them walking and everybody else is just not listening to this conversation. <laughs> I also don't like hugs. They're so big and round. Why, why are they that round? <laughs> I'm sorry, I could ramble on and on in character. It's so funny. Anyways, yeah, that's basically the conversation that um, Alethi's having with um, Kat's character. Charlotte. So, you guys go the opposite way this time. You head into the woods, and at first, they seem kind of normal. They don't actually seem that much different from how the Hemlock Woods did at the beginning. It did appear like there was some sort of pathway that's now covered up with moss, dirt, fallen trees, and you start seeing some webbing as you go further in, and extremely large mushrooms. Go ahead and roll perception, all of you guys. Pog. Pog. Ni- 19. 16. Anybody get like 22. an 11 or below? I got no. 22. Wow. Wait, what did Josh get? And flower. Four! Okay. Flower, no. <laughs> okay. So you guys are all walking along through the woods. Uh, Alifi's just going on rambling to Charlotte. But at the same time, you're somehow all kind of paying attention to your surroundings. Um, I was just listening calmly and just observing everything. Flower is kind of toward the tail end of the party and still isn't used to forests because there aren't any in the Celestial Court. In the Celestial Court, everything is kind of like cloudy. All the castles and stuff are in the air. There's so not really trees. Like the beanstalk story. Sort of, except they just float in the air. There's no okay, beanstalk. Bean- well, they, they have wings. They, anyway. But yeah, so you're not used to the forest at all, and you accidentally trip over some vines that start moving. Oh and God. you fall into several shrubs. You start to pick yourself back up and kind of dust your clothes off. Um, your cloak kind of gets caught on some thorns, and the shrubs start moving on their own. Does the flower- is this just a flower or anyone it's, else? It's just flower. Uh, you guys can roll perception again. I got uh, a 10. Charlotte yeah, doesn't notice. I'm okay. 11, so do I notice? No. Oh, wait, no, I get bonus to that. Yeah, natural, I got a natural 20. Okay, yeah, I got a natural 23. 20. You just stop rolling so high. Everybody who gotten above what? an 11, you noticed that the shrubs around Flower have started moving. Oh, so the shrub is adorable. Yeah, the shrubs pop above ground, and they have, like, little root feet that kind of remind you of, like, birds. And... They are going to roll to attack Flower. <laughs> you take two damage as uh, the shrubs start attacking you because you agitated them by falling on top of them. Also, yes, they are cute little evil shrubs at the moment. Everybody who rolled Does above an 11 noticed. 
So I think everybody but Charlotte noticed. Okay, so, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna roll to, uh, I'm gonna roll to hit them with fire. But fire's well, right there! Yeah! I can control my fire! I'm going to grab them, or cut them with a sword, something. Well, roll, roll initiative. You guys okay. can all roll initiative now. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Got seven. A damn six. Got mm. sixteen. Oh dang, twenty-two for flower. Okay, so Josh eighteen. Jade eighteen. Andrew a solid three. Alright, so flower is first. Uh Taya's first. Taya. Tickle their feet. Um, roll to hit. <laughs> Too. Okay. You try to tickle the awakened shrub's feet, but it quickly <laughs> jumps away with its little root bird-like talons. Yep. Shrub turn, so the shrub is going to try and attack again. Unnatural I twenty to hit. Wow. Okay. It rolls an unnatural twenty to hit. However, this thing has minus one strength, so uh, it tries to slash at you, but its attacks barely do anything to you this time. You take zero damage as it tries to just scratch you with its little root feet. Hey, I know it's not my turn, but I do have a question for before it's my turn, Adele. Mm-hmm. Is the Fae... Is he paying attention? Ludon? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. It's Jade Titty Cleaver's turn. Can I befriend Shrub? Mm, you know what, just, just roll... roll... nature. It's a shrub. Oh, Roll nature. <laughs> yeah, so animal handling doesn't make a sound. Yeah, that's what I'm like. I'm like, man, I mean, it's, it's a plant. J got 20. You go over and you start you start petting the shrub, and it seems to kind of, it starts acting like a strange bird almost, and just kind of like cuddles toward your hand, and you befriend the shrub. Oh my god. This little eyeballs just look at you. Oh my god. We. It's a Leafy's turn. Thank you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this will end well for everyone. <laughs> okay, so how many shrubs are there? Two, although um, Jade just befriended one. Okay, so there are two shrubs. Are they close to each other? Jade is holding one, and the other is kind of standing, like, annoyed behind Flower. Within 10 feet of each other. Yeah, I'd say about that much. Uh, okay, let's see. Here's my issue. Here's my- here's- here's a Leafy's issue. They, they they hurt someone and you know maybe that's not a very good thing to happen. They're they're just gonna they're just gonna back away and try to not choose violence right now. And maybe they're going to go over to um Shrob. Shrob. The friend in Shrob. Shrob. They're gonna go over to Shrob. They're gonna try to not choose violence. Okay, roll nature. <laughs> oh boy, this is gonna only end well. I love it. 11? Okay, you have- you rolled just enough to beat this thing's intelligence, <laughs> so... I'm gonna- I'm gonna go over to it, and I'm gonna- Okay, I go over there, I- I, I kind of like, kneel down next to Shrob. <laughs> yeah, that's his name now, Shrob. <laughs> I just kind of like, stare at eye level at Shrob, into Shrob's eyes. That's it. I'm just- I, I kneel so basically down. basically you're doing a staring contest to intimidate it into being your friend. Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> Can I roll intimidation? <laughs> you wanna intimidate it? <laughs> well, not like- not like intentionally, but like, yeah. Okay, roll intimidation. Thirteen. Okay, yeah, it's- it's pretty intimidated by you. Like, you've tamed it, but it looks, like, more terrified than Jade's does. It's like shaking. Its little leaves are like- <laughs> You just hear like noise like that. <laughs> it's better than the alternative. I was going to shoot um, them with my gun and then explode them. As you guys are doing this, you're, like you're just petting the shrubs. And you're just like, oh! Uh, I assume Charlotte's just standing in the back, like, God, why? <laughs> mm -hmm. Those of you that aren't messing with the shrubs hear a rustling all around you, and the ground starts trembling. I roll perception. <laughs> sure. Twenty-two. Okay, I roll. Uh, yeah, go for it. Uh, I mean, okay, no, see, this fits because my character is supposedly hyper-vigilant, so... so. 21. 21? A damn five again. <laughs> I hate this die. Everybody that got above a 15, you've noticed all the rustling, the ground's trembling, and you smell something rotten. And Luran kind of looks around and he's like, 
That smells like... Oh no. And those of you that have paid attention, um, you follow his line of sight, and you just see this giant walking mushroom causing like a big thud. 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 Oh thud. Is it like really tall? Yes, it's very tall. Oh, okay, no. I immediately take out my gun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next time it's- let's see, we're gonna keep initiative order. So, technically, it's Ludon's turn, because you guys tamed the other shrub. So you guys just see as he puts his hands together into like a triangular shape, from this triangle shoots a beam of light, and in the middle of the ground appears little mushroom sprites. They're so tiny! We're going I to, want to eat them, but like in a nice way. What in the middle has a knife? It's Kika. I want to- I want to eat them. Guys, I'm gonna can assign everyone here these mushrooms. Alright, Kika's the one with the knife. <laughs> I'm the one with the little instrument. So yeah, he's gonna summon two of them. After him go his mushroom sprites. So the first thing they're gonna do is, of course, they use poisonous spores. However, since the other thing is a mushroom, uh, it takes no damage, so they're going to attack now. They're little weapons. One of them manages to hit, and they take their little knife, and they run up, and they do... They do five damage to this giant violet fungus. So you just see it kind of, like, run up on its little stubby feet, like... And it just takes a knife and goes, woo! Oh my god! That's the sound it makes. It's <laughs> toad. The second one um, uses its little its little spear and throws it, but it misses because it doesn't have enough strength. <laughs> uh, it's Alvari's turn. <laughs> I'm gonna okay. I'm a uh, I'm really going to use this guy. Oh no! Because I am not gonna use ice. So ray, of, I'm casting ray of frost. I got nat twenty. Oh my god! Okay, that's a critical damage. 11. So this thing is, uh, it has root-like feelers that grow from its base that kind of like creep along uh, the forest floor and you take a giant blinding beam of light that freezes one of its four stalks and it breaks and it lets out this weird screeching sound that you're like, how in the world is a plant making that really creepy sound? <laughs> Charlotte's turn! I'm rolling to hit with my great sword and my, uh, other thing and I Hammer. got... 18 and oh that's a 22 and a 13 damage all right so you lunge forward with your sword and you cut off the second feeler from this thing as it's trying to lash out at you andrew time that's an 18 hit yes 15 damage so you managed to run off and you cut off the third of its feelers so it has one feeler left and it is now going to attack Okay, oh, nat 20 plus 6 to hit. <laughs> um, Charlotte? Good lord. Uh -oh. oh, fuck no! Oh, no, 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 shit! Welcome to being a tank. <laughs> shit! Uh, you oh god, it did max damage. You take 15 damage oh, as it uses its rotting touch oh, attack. Shit, 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 shit. It, one of its. Oh, I can it's it's feeler lashes out and it just starts rotting your flesh with the slightest touch. Um, um, Adele. <laughs> yes. Did I heal um after the last fight or no? Yes, yes, you healed because oh we were god. out of combat. We were out of combat. Oh my god! Oh, give me one second to fix my uh, HP. Um. <laughs> It manages to, like, touch a piece of flesh that your armor isn't covering, and it rots. It is now Flower's Shit. turn. Yeah, you can use Cure Wounds Thank on, God. Um... Hey, Taya, we love you. Very much. <laughs> you can use Cure Wounds on, a uh, Cat, yeah. Flower heals Charlotte for 12 hit points. Yes. Thank you. Jade turn. Okay, Joshua got 20 to hit. Unnatural. You shoot, uh, you shoot your crossbow, and the arrow sticks in the mushroom side, and, like, oozes this gross pus. Oh, Alethes, or Alethes? Alethes. Gun! Alright. <laughs> so I'm gonna take out my gun. I'm sorry, I, no, it's already out. I have my gun. I raised my gun. Um... Gun. Gun. Would you say that there's anyone around us within ten feet of it? Yes. Yes. Uh, Charlotte. Okay. Oh, shit. Maybe I shouldn't do that then. Oh, shit. What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? You know, okay, never mind. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna shoot my gun. Oh, gods. What are you doing? 14. Oh, no. 14? That hits. I I'm gonna use an enfeebling bullet. So 12 damage plus 6 damage. 
Um, and then they have to make a constitution saving throw. 13. So that's it. 18 damage. Wait, hold on. I also have action surge, don't I? <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna take that action surge. <laughs> that says six more damage. So I do 20, 24 damage. Wait, did you roll the hit for the second attack? Yeah, you guys, you guys watch as Bothman Alifi <laughs> takes out his gun. Which most of you guys have never seen a gun before, by the way. Oh, They're no. extremely rare. Um... <laughs> and he just, they pull it out, and they just shoot this mushroom twice. It blows off its last feeler, and then they shoot it right in the center, and it explodes into a bunch of purple goop everywhere. It just smells like rotting flesh all over the place. You guys are covered in mushroom guts now. I turn around and I say, we're safe. Luron's just standing there, like, with his arms kind of up, and his hands just like, as he's covered in purple sludge and his little mushroom sprites are dancing around him in the sludge like woo! I was just gonna okay. like just shuck it off of him and just like eh? Uh, Charlotte just takes like, out a handkerchief down. and wipes off her face. Did I cast prestidigitation to clean things? Yeah, I think Izzy's done it in a past campaign before so why not? <laughs> okay, I'm cleaning myself first of all. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of you all. Elvari, like Elvari. <laughs> I'm cleaning Elvari with my prestigitation. As you do that, he's surprised, but he says, oh, thank you. That's it, that's all I do. <laughs> Everyone else, you're on your own. He says, thank you, and oh, what do you eat, exactly? Um, I know my character doesn't remember. Can I flex off all of the mushroom goo? Go for it. <laughs> Roll strength. <laughs> um, I'm gonna reach into my bag, and can I search for food that uh, I think that the moth bonus will eat? Sure. Yeah, Andrew, you managed to just flex all of the mushroom goo off. Like, it just flies off of you. You're like, flex. Nobody remembers what moths eat. I'm rolling to see if they're, if I know what moths eat. Um, a moth feeds on um nectar, liquid oozing out of a fruit. <laughs> <laughs> can I just, like, give you a, fru a fruit and you can just stick your tongue um, in it? Snap wounds of animals and even <laughs> up on other animal droppings. <laughs> A certain right. species of moth also sips muddy water. <laughs> and they like fibers uh, and clothes. Hey, uh, so clothes. can I search for fruit in my rations and present one to the moth? Oh yeah, you find some fruit. Um, it says adult moths don't have to eat as much as larva. That's why- that's why Alethe can't remember. <laughs> He's like, when's the last time I ate? I don't know. The last time I ate was probably back, back you know, before the thing. Hey, Alethe. Uh, thank you. Uh, here's an apple. I, I I take the apple, I stare at it for a good five seconds, and I put the entire thing in my mouth. <laughs> Are you gonna chew that, or just keep it in there? I'm chewing. Okay. I start chewing it. Uh, do, <laughs> do I have to, like, narrate the entire eating process? I chew it up into a little bit, and then it goes down my throat, and then it goes into my stomach. <laughs> Also, it says some adult moths don't feed at all. They simply bank on the energy they acquired as a young moth while foraging through the surrounding vegetation. No well, food for two uh, weeks it is. Uh, uh, Loren, so should we proceed? Yes, but we should probably be much more careful because violet fungus appear after they've eaten corpses, decaying ones. So, it seems there is plenty uh, of- my family members. Alright, I suppose- I'm gonna away. <laughs> you like puts gun away. <laughs> As you head deeper into the woodlands, the trees become more and more tangled with one another in a sick and twisted dance. Some of the trees are covered in thick webbing, while weeds and thorny vines choke out the other plant life trying to stay alive on the forest floor. The forest feels dark and dismal. You hear the sounds of skittering creatures and clicking echoing around you. After you pass a thicket encased in webs that dangle with the bones of humanoids and scattered items, Luron's serious expression turns into one of complete alarm. He unsheathes his sword and holds it out to stop you all from walking any further into the woods. An enemy of my ancestors rests here. He glances back at Charlotte and Flower and says, Do you two feel it as well? For everybody who's fae or fae ancestry, roll perception, I guess. Just, just perception. Want to fae ancestry? Kind of. It's more like they kind of are connected in a way. They both uh, have like a strong connection to nature, but they're not exactly the same okay. thing. Nat 20! Uh, nat 14. 20! Nat 20! Nat 20! Nat 20! Nat 20! I uh, got a nat 20. Oh, you probably got something above a 6? 
18. Oh, darling. No, I'm saying, yeah, Flower, you feel it. You feel something lurking nearby, and Elvari, you just feel, like, a little bit uncomfortable. Something is near that you don't like. Does it remind me of Arovia? I'd say it's slightly, a little bit. Just because okay. creepy forest and very weird. Well, yeah, this forest is a lot like Barovia's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do I feel? Charlotte, you feel it spot on. It's as if, as if replying to like his question, the surrounding forest goes completely silent, and you feel like this deep, crippling fear, but also rage. It's almost as, as if you've met like your natural enemy in this place, and. Liron just whispers below his breath to where only Elvari can hear, and he says, Edder Cups. I don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> he's gonna lean closer and whisper, What is that? Uh, as you whisper, What is that? <laughs> the silence breaks, and this really freaky looking creature jumps out of the trees. It's just a very lovely thing. Oh no. I probably will get actually find a cute watch. You see it, this creature with like really long taloned hands. Like it's its arms are unnaturally long. They kind of hang almost like an ape's, but its face is of like a spider and it has like these two giant stomachs uh, on it. No, no, no. Listen, no, this no. is what it looks like. Uh, I like it. Can I can I make it a best pet? You want no. this thing? No. That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. You got it! Wait, Ezra? I hate you all. So, Amari oh. just really says, aww. Oh, he sees it. Uh, and that's where we end the session. Yeah, we're gonna end, we're gonna end with right there. These things are natural enemies of fey creatures. They hungrily trap and devour like pixies and sprites and fey. But they're so cute! They're not cute! <laughs> Absolutely.